Bianca, tell me that's not true. Mom, what's wrong? What are you talking about? I'm talking about you. Is it true that you quit your job? Um, yeah. I quit my job yesterday. What? So that's true. You quit your job? Oh my god, Bianca. I can't believe that you quit your job without telling your mother. Sorry, Mom. I didn't mean to hide it from you. I was going to tell you about it at dinner tomorrow. Were you? Oh, I don't think so. You might have said that because I already knew your secret. It's not like that, Mom. But how could you know? I haven't told anyone in our family yet. It's Beverly. She overheard you talking to your friend on the phone last night. You said you quit your job, so you had time to hang out at the coffee house the next day. She even saw you going out this morning. You must be with your friend now, right? Don't deny it. Because I know, Beverly always tells the truth. Mom, I won't deny it. I quit my job for a good reason. So what? What's the problem here? Why are you so angry? Also, Beverly shouldn't have told you what she knew by eavesdropping on my private conversation. She doesn't know why I quit. Ugh, she's such a snoop. Why does she have it out for me? Better watch your manners. Beverly is your sister and a good girl. She's also an amazingly talented model. She's making more money than you. Now, you have no job. Do you even have a brain, Bianca? Just a day after becoming unemployed, you decided to waste your money instead of saving it for the future. What did I teach you about financial management? Mom, I didn't forget what you taught me. It's been a long time since I hung out with my friends. I just want to relax a bit. Relax? Let me tell you something. The first thing you should do after quitting a job is to look for another one. Don't you know that your sister is working extremely hard as a model? But look at you. You're not either as beautiful or hardworking as your sister. You're even out of work and wasting your time chattering away with your friends. How lazy and useless are you, Bianca? What are you going to do for this family if you don't have any jobs? Mom, you cannot say that. Looks like you forgot all the good things I did. Do you remember any of that? I had to start working three jobs to pay our bills and support Beverly and her modeling career. I've been working with no day off since Dad passed away. Seven years ago, I devoted myself to this family. Now that Beverly is able to make good money, I think I can finally take a rest. I don't care what you did. You have to go to your restaurant and beg them to take you back. Maybe they still need a cook like you. Or you can work as a waitress or anything. Just do whatever you can to make money. No, I can't, Mom. I have a new plan for my future. And I can make it happen only by quitting that job. Even if I want to come back, that's impossible. I've already found someone to fill my position. Basically, there's no turning back, Mom. Really? Oh my god. Then this is really the end for you in that restaurant. They paid really good money. I can't understand what you're going to do with your life, Bianca. Come on, it's not that bad. You don't have to freak out, okay? I also told you that I had a plan. Can you just trust your eldest daughter right now? Of course not. How can I trust a person who doesn't have salaries? Don't worry, Mom. Listen, I'll tell you about my plan. No, no, no. It's just a waste of time. I just want to know if there are any restaurants in your plans. Well, I don't think I'm going to work as a cook anymore. What? Are you serious? Are you saying that you're switching your career? Yes, but I have a reason to make that decision. I'm sure you'll be happy after listening to me. It's hitting my roof now and nothing is going to cheer me up. Listen, Bianca. You've been working as a cook for years because cooking is the only thing that you're good at. And don't forget that you're now 27, not 22 like your sister. Switching careers at this age is insane. I'm sure that you'll end up failing again and again, no matter what it is. Just give up your crazy ideas and go find a job in a restaurant. Mom, I'm not afraid of changing my job at the age of 27 or even 30. And I hope you can have faith in me as you have in my sister. I mean, you've always been supporting her with the whole modeling stuff and giving her whatever she wants. 
What about me? I'm just begging you for only this one time to believe in me. Is it too much? Your sister is way more talented than you. I supported her because I knew for sure that she would be successful. But you? I can tell. You didn't even let me explain myself. Everything is so obvious. You quit your job and decided to be an unemployed woman because you felt lazy. That's all. You know what? Now, you don't deserve a room in my house. Huh? I don't deserve what? Your room. No bedroom for you until you get a salary. You'll live in the attic from today. Period. You kicked me out of my room just because I quit that job? This is absolute nonsense. Why? Why would you do this to me? Were my monthly allowances not enough for me to have a bedroom in this house? Don't bring those tiny allowances up, Bianca. Tiny? Oh, I can tell that you've been living in this house for the past seven years based on the tiny allowances I gave you. Now you think I won't be able to give you the money because I'm out of work? So you take my room instead, right? Look, if you're going to be totally rational about this, I can't argue with you. But you still want to keep your nonsense ideas about quitting your stable salaries for something illusory. Well, I'm going to take your room. It doesn't make sense at all, Mom. Where would I live? And what would you do with my room? I have a plan for that room. Beverly will use it as a closet. Oh my god. It's always Beverly. You do all of this only for her sake. You're obsessed. Since she's a beautiful daughter and I'm not, right, Mom? Well, I didn't say that. But don't get jealous. Beverly deserves my love because she's a good daughter. You're older, so you should be more understanding than this. Is it important now? No matter how hard I try, if I make only one mistake, you would use it against me. I'm always the black sheep of this family. Ah, whatever. I want you to come back home now and move out of your room. I'm going to get that room redecorated tomorrow. Beverly has so many clothes that she's in need of a new closet as soon as possible. Hurry up. I'm wasting too much time with you. You know what? I'm on my way home and I'm going to move out of your house today. I cannot stand to live with you for another day. Are you sure? I'm not going to hold you back. But you should think again about it. No, Mom. I would rather live alone than be treated like dirt in my own family. Okay, fine. I'm okay with that. Now, Beverly can use your room how long she wants. Great. It's not my room anymore. Yes, but you still have to send me your money every month. Huh? Mom? What are you talking about? After disowning me so cruelly, you're still going to ask me for money? Do I make myself clear? I will not tolerate you and your favoritism any longer. I'm out. Then I will not save any space in my house for you. Don't beg me to take you back if you become homeless. Absolutely not. I'll make you regret what you did today. Bye, Mom. Hey, Bianca. I heard that you had a quarrel with Mom about your job yesterday. Right? I can't believe that you would move out after just a little argument. What are you, 10? You're so childish, really. Shut up, Beverly. I'm busy unboxing my belongings right now, so I don't have time for you. If you want to just brag about changing your room you got after I left, then bye. Hang on, Bianca. Don't be mad at me. I didn't mean to take your room. That's mom's idea, not mine. Oh, you don't have to pretend to be an understanding sister. I know you've been dying for a new closet since you passed the very first audition. So you already knew, huh? But you were acting like you didn't care about me at all. Isn't mom's attention enough for you? Come on, Bianca. You're my sister. You're supposed to take good care of me. Yesterday, when mom told me that you were not living with us anymore, I was so sad. If you come back and live with us, maybe I'll let you sleep in my closet. Well, 
My clothes might be smelly because of you, but I guess it's going to be fine. I'll apply more perfume to my clothes. Wow, what a surprise. My dear sister is offering me a space in her new closet, which used to be my room. It's so kind of you to say so, Beverly. Should I say thank you? You pick me girl? Huh? What are you calling me? A pick me girl? How dare you, you ugly hag? See? This is your true self. Don't you feel tired of faking it all the time? Well, I'm too sick of you. Just cut the crap and tell me what you really want from me. Oh, I just want to tell you goodbye and say thank you for quitting your job. That was the best decision you ever made. Actually, because now I've got my own closet. Yay! To be honest, I would be happier if you'd left earlier. Me too. I think quitting my job is the best thing I've ever done for myself. I've been doing the things I don't like for so long. Now it's time for me to find myself. Besides, thanks to this decision, I can know how truly toxic this family is. Don't blame others. If you're not loved, you should take a look at yourself in the mirror. You're ugly and fat. No boys like you without face. That's why you have never had a boyfriend. Although you're 27 now, <laughs> I bet you'll end up being alone forever. I'd rather be alone than live with a pick-me-ish, greedy, selfish girl like you. I don't need a horrible family. I don't need either of you in my life. Uh, what makes an unemployed person like you to be confident? You cocky freak. I can't believe you have the nerve to call me a freak. Why not? I'm a successful model now. I can call you whatever you want. Freak. You've just made a couple hundred bucks as a model, but you call yourself successful? I don't know whether you're confident or just an ass, but you should know that you're not going to survive in the fashion industry with a mindset like that. You'll be replaced very soon because of your bad manners and narrow-mindedness. What? Bianca, take back your words. I'm going to be much more successful than you. And I'm going to make you get down on your knee. Blah, blah, blah. Come back when you are, okay? Now I'm done with you. Bye. Hey, Bianca. This is your mother. Why didn't you pick up your phone? I'm calling you a million times. Mom? Oh, I'm sorry. I deleted your number. I thought it wasn't necessary to speak. What? Did you delete your mother's number? After three years, you're even worse, Bianca. Why do you call me all of a sudden? I'm about to go into an important meeting, so hurry up. All right. Is it true that you're making millions of dollars as an author? I read an article about you saying that your latest book is extremely famous recently. Oh, so after a long time, the first thing you asked me wasn't, how are you or is anything good? But how much money do you make? Really, mom? If you want to know so bad, let me tell you that article is telling the truth. Now I'm making eight figures a year. Oh my God. That's so incredible, honey. I knew that one day you'd be successful in your new career. I'm so happy and proud of you, Bianca. What? Hold on, hold on. I don't understand any of your words. What did you just say? I said that I was very proud of you, my dear daughter, and I miss you so much. Why didn't you call me in the past three years? Well, I didn't call you because I deleted your number. The reason why I deleted your number is that you kicked me out of my room and disowned me when I quit my job at the restaurant. What's wrong with you? Why are you acting as if we're so close? I'm the black sheep, remember? Oh, honey. Don't call yourself like that. You're not a sheep. You're my lovely daughter. Aha! You're changing your attitude towards me after knowing my income. Wow, you're so interesting, Mom. Does Beverly know you're texting me? If she knew you called me your lovely daughter, I'd bet she'd go crazy. She's always your favorite child, isn't she? Well, I don't care. She may be sleeping now. Honey, I have no idea what I should do with her. 
She hasn't gotten any new additions recently. She just stays at home and sleeps all day. Oh, why don't you go home and help her a little bit? I think she'll be happy to meet you again. Ha ha. Oh, mom. The older you are, the greater sense of humor you've got. You know what? After such a long time, I finally received praise from my mom. But I don't feel happy at all. Why? Because you're lying to me. I'm not a fool, mom. I'm not going to fall for that. No, I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. I really miss you, Bianca. You miss me? Or do you miss my money? Oh, come on. I miss you more than your money. You know that. No, I don't. I totally doubt that. What's going on in your head, mom? When I quit my job three years ago, you got angry and criticized me without listening to my reasons. You also said that I would definitely fail and then threw me away. Where is that woman? I forced you out because I wanted to help you. That day, I knew that only by letting you go would you have the time to follow your dreams. Now your dreams come true. You're a successful and highly paid author. You should come back and live with us, honey. We're a family. I'm an author, but I've never imagined that this sort of story would happen to me. I know you're doing all of these things because you want to take advantage of me. What if I'm broke? Are you going to call me a million times after three years? Well, I can't tell. But the point is, now you're rich. You should support your mom and your sister. It's your duty because you're the first daughter of this family. You've always been the breadwinner for our family. We need you. Mom, you only need my money. You abandoned me when you thought I was poor. But you know what? At that time when I decided to quit my job, I had received an advance against royalties from my first book from my agent, which was twice as much as my salary at the restaurant. I wonder if you'd let me explain first? Would you have treated me differently? But then I realized that all you cared about was how much money I could give you. You didn't love me, so do you now? Therefore, I don't see any reason why I should have a relationship with you, or even call you my mom. No, honey. Please don't say that. I need you. I'm going through the hardest time of my life. I wouldn't make it without you. Please come back. Why didn't you tell me that three years ago? Mom, you lost your chance then. Now I'm content with my life. I don't want to let any toxic people step into my life again. Even if it's my mother and my sister. I'm not going to let you take a dime from me. You don't believe me after all that I said? Fine, you made me do this. I'm going to ruin your reputation, and your readers will betray you like the way you've just done to me. I'm going to reveal all the shitty things you did to our family. Like what? Let my mom kick me out and my sister steal my room? If that story is public, whose reputation will be ruined? Me or your favorite daughter who's waiting for an audition? Are you threatening me, you brat? No, I'm not. I'm just telling you the truth. And mom, I won't be forced by society to look after you or forget how you've treated me all along. Whatever you do, I have people to handle those kinds of stuff. You better keep that in mind. Now, I really gotta go. I won't receive any calls or messages from you. Bye, mom. What? Hey, Bianca, please help us. After that, the chaos in my life escalated when my mother and sister managed to discover my address. It appears as though they had been tailing me, presumably from my publisher's office. Their persistent attempts to confront me outside my apartment were relentless, and then they bombarded me with their demands. They insisted on a monthly allowance of $5,000, proposing that Beverly becomes the face of my next book and floated various other ideas that would make anyone cringe. Their maneuvers took a dramatic turn when they advertently exposed their deeds to the surveillance cameras and stalled around my flat. Armed with undeniable evidence, I warned them to stay away or face legal consequences for stalking me. Only then did the uninvited visit cease, though it didn't stop the occasional encounters with Beverly in my neighborhood 
Her presence felt deliberate, waiting for a chance to approach me. In one such encounter, Beverly implored me for some cash. A request denied as a plea for assistance. The haggard look on her face hinted a tumultuous period. I remained steadfast, refusing to offer a single penny. In response, Beverly's demeanor swiftly transformed and she began casting blame on me for supposedly ruining her life. It was a pitiful sight to witness the downfall of someone who was once perceived as successful and now stood before me, a stark embodiment of defeat.